Hi, Mr. Simone again from Hammond Middle School. Uh, today we're going to be estimating uh, non-perfect square roots. It's a continuation of an earlier video. Um, whenever I talk about the idea of non-perfect, I'm talking about uh, a concept known as irrational. Um, basically, when you take the square root of these values, you're going to end up with a decimal that continues on and on and on with no specific pattern uh, to them. Okay, our job here. Uh, is going to be to try to get a value uh, to the to the tenths place relatively close uh, to to its actual uh, irrational value. Um, so we're just going to kind of you know go through this uh, similar to what we did before in the other videos. All right. So square root of uh, 14 is irrational. Um, to try to get a decimal value that represents the square root of 14, we need to identify two perfect squares that surround that value, or surround 14. All right. Our lower value is going to be 9, and our upper value is going to be 16. We know that the square root of 14 is in between those two values, which are 3 and 4. By identifying that, we know that the square root of 14 is going to be 3 point something. Okay. But we just have to figure out what is that point going to be. To do that, we look at how far away the um, square root of 14, how far away it is from the other values. In other words, um, how many whole radicals we are away from each term. 14 is two whole radicals away from 16, and we are five whole radicals away from 9. So this tells us that we're much closer to, that, uh, to the 4. So I think a good estimate would be somewhere around, you know, 3.8, maybe 3.7. We use a wavy equal sign to mean an approximation, so it's not exact, it's just relatively close. Now, I found that some students actually prefer to see a number line. It kind of helps them a little bit more to visualize how to find this value. All right, so to do that, uh, we take our square root of 9, which is our uh, lower perfect square, our square root of 16, we have is obviously 4, and in between that, we have some value of 3.5. Now, what I tell students is that when you're finding uh, radicals of whole numbers or of these non-perfect square roots, um, you'll never end up with a, exactly a 0.5 value, okay? It's just, it's just not going to happen. Um, but understanding where that midpoint is will help us to identify if the value is, you know, above the 0.5 or below the 0.5. Now if we look, we, know, we did say that uh, you know, 14 was only two spaces away uh, from 16 and five uh, whole units away from 9. So if we had to approximate you know, position of 14, we could say it's right about here, all right, square root of 14. Um, so that value, you know, knowing that it's above 3.5 is important. So I think you know, 3.7, 3.8, those are all reasonable answers. Um, Whenever we're doing this in class, uh, you can, you know, get an estimate, but always double check with your calculator to make sure that, that it is close enough. Um, it's always a good, a good tool. All right. Uh, the next one, the next example, we have the square root of 27. Um, I will tell you that sometimes students can, can identify either the top, uh, you know, square root or the bottom square root, but those perfect squares. Um, but sometimes they can't identify both at the same time. Something like the square root of 27, I know most of us are, are, are pretty good and understand that you know, the square root of 25 is 5, so you can get that right away. But sometimes thinking about the upper numbers sometimes gets us a little bit more confused. But what you can do is if you know that the lower value, the square root of 25, is 5, you know that the upper value has to be 6. All right? And you have to understand well, what, what's the square root of what is 6. And, and that might help you a little bit easier to, to get your answers, okay? Um, it's just a thought, especially as the numbers start to get larger and larger. You might not know your perfect squares, you know, above 225. Um, but it is important to kind of be able to identify at least, you know, a perfect square above or a perfect square below to get started. In this problem, we know we're going to be somewhere around 5 point something. Um, we have to identify how far away we are from uh, that 27. So 36 is uh, 9 spaces away, and 25 is 2 spaces away. And again, when I say spaces, I'm talking about whole radicals. 
So you know like there's you know 25, 26, then 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. Okay. Um, so I think a good estimate here, maybe be about like 5.1, maybe 5.2. Alright. And again, I, when I say point, I'm you know, I'm, I'm just kind of doing a quick version. The actual rate way to read this is five and two tenths, just like this one's three and seven tenths. But again, I use point just because it's a little bit quicker to use. When you want to see a number line, we know that the middle is 5.5. Um, our lower end is the square root of 25, which is 5. Our upper end is 36, which is uh, 6. And as we said before, um, we know that we're going to be below that halfway mark because we're only 2 units away from 25, but 9 units away from, from 6. So we're probably somewhere right about here. And again, uh, you can check your estimate. You can find out you know, what the square root of 27 actually is on a calculator and, and see how close we are. It's okay to be a few tenths off, um, but we don't want to, you know, we, we want to make sure that we, on this problem, that we're in the lower end and we're this problem, we're in the upper end of our, of our decimal values. Okay. The last one, this last example, um, this is a good one to kind of identify just because it allows us to see um, a radical value that's like really close to that five point uh, to that point five range. All right, so this one, um, seventy three, we know that it's between uh, nine and eight, so the square root of sixty four and the square root of eighty one. We know it's in between those values, seventy three is eight spaces away from 81, or eight whole radicals. 73 from 64 is nine whole radicals. So we're really close to that uh, 0.5 range. But if you notice, we're slightly closer to that um, square root of 81, only you know one less uh, whole radical away. So I'd say a good estimate would be just above that 0.5 range. Um, I'd say about 8.6 you know, is probably pretty reasonable. Um, 8.7 I'd accept, even 8.8 8 I'd, I'd accept as well. Um, but 8.6 or 8 and 6 tenths is, is, is good. The number line approach. All right, you have your 64, which is 8, your 81, which is 9, and that 8.5 is, is in the middle. As you know, we are eight spaces away here and nine spaces away here. So we are slightly closer to this position, all right? Only one space away from that actual mid value. Um, so again, just kind of a visual to help some of us kind of see that. If you wanted to, if you were to use a calculator, um, the first problem, if you did the square root of uh, 14, you get about uh, 3.741, so 3.7 or 3 and 7 tenths is good. Uh, for number 2, you take the square root of 27, you get about 5.196, so again, uh, 5.2 or 5 and 2 tenths is reasonable. And lastly, the square root of 73, all right, you actually end up with uh, 8.544. So again, something larger than 8 uh, and 5 tenths, 8 and 6 tenths is, is reasonable. I hope this helped. Uh, again, at any time, you can kind of pause the video, try a problem over again. Um, you know, see you in class.